Hi, Pedro here from Pythonlist again. In this video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to set up your environment, create an Azure function, test, deploy in Azure function. Before I go any further, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, and like the video. So, first set up your environment. You need to open a free Azure account by going to this website here and click start for free and follow the prompts. Once your account is opened, you have to install Azure Functions Core 2 in your system. In this case, I installed in Ubuntu. So get the version 4 point, whatever is the latest one. So for Linux, you just copy that into your command line. So just go copy and paste in your command line here and enter. So you do for all these commands. So this is for any Linux and then for Ubuntu, which is the case of my virtual machine wsl and then update your ubuntu system and then finally install azure function or to using the apps get package manager once you have azure functions core tools installed in your system you now have to install visual studio code in my case i install it in windows so once VS Code is installed, you have to install some extensions in VS Code. The first one is the Python extension. So go to here and then install, look for Python. Python. And then the one that you have to install is this one, the one from Microsoft. After that, install Azure Function Extension. You just type Azure Function, and then install this one from Microsoft as well. One thing that you have to make sure is that you have Python installed on your system. So let me just Open the command line again. Uh, delete this. So, just to check if you have Python, it just go Python dash dash version. So, in my case, I have a 3.9.15 as a global installation. But don't worry, if you don't know how to install Python, I have a video that I'll put in the description on how to install PyEnv and install multiple versions of Python in your system. All right, you've done all that, you are ready to create a function using VS Code. But before, just to organize your code, you have to follow these steps. I'll show you. So, first step, create a directory where you're gonna save your function code. To do that in Linux, just go Mkdir, and then the name of the, the the name of the directory. Let's call it Azure Quick Function. And then you have to change direct change the directory to the directory of the folder. You do cd, and then the name of the folder. You can just tap the first two letters and press tab. Okay. Inside the folder to open VS Code, you just write code space dot and then enter and that's going to open vs code in the directory that you just created you can see here azure functions in vs code you're going to click the azure extension that you installed and then on the menu workspace you're going to click this icon here there is a lightning bolt with a plus which is create function button. 
Once you click that, you choose the current directory where the functions are going to be saved. After that, you click the language, which is in this case Python. Then you select the, virtu the, the version that's the Python interpreter. In this case, I have Python 3.9.15. And then I'm going to pick the function type HTTP trigger. Give it a name. Uh, they suggest HTTP trigger one. And I'm going to call HTTP quick. And then the authentication mode, pick anonymous. All right. What this will do is it will create a boilerplate for your project. We'll have a .fem folder with your Python virtual environment files, a VS Code configuration file, which tell what are the configurations of the VS Code, it's all standard, and then a folder with the name of your function with two files, three files. The dunder in it dunder.py, which is your function entry point, a function.json file with your function configuration. You can see authentication anonymous. The type is HTTP trigger. I'm not going to get the detail of the rest of the configuration. A sample.dat file. A function ignore file, which are all the uh, directories and files that the function will ignore. A git ignore file a host.json file with, is, with the version of your function, a local.settings.json file where you can put a key value pairs if you have any virtual um, local environment variables that you're going to use in your tests, and finally a requirement.txt file with all the dependencies of your project. In this case only Azure functions package. Now that we um, know the boilerplate, we're going to test our function to test. It's very easy. You just press F5. So it's going to open the terminal here, install all the dependencies, and then launch the function and run locally. So there is this HTTP uh, endpoint where you can make a call to this function. To do that, open your uh, Postman. I'm just going to show here. Open Postman, create a new request. Go to your terminal, copy this URL. And this is a get request. Just make a get request to this endpoint. That's going to give you an error. So if I go to the function, so I just quickly explain what this function does. Uh, it's an endpoint that accepts post and get request and look either for uh, a body uh, with a name key and the value is going to be the name of the person or uh, a query parameter. So let's do first a query parameter. In the URL you put um, question mark, then name, and then the equal sign, and then the value. Let's put my name, Pedro. All right. Hello, Pedro. This HTTP trigger function executed successfully. The code is working. Let's try to now give a post and then body raw JSON. You're going to put like a curly braces and then quote unquote name colon quote-unquote Pedro. Let's do uh, with a 
post request. Yeah, the function is working. Now the function is ready to be deployed. So let's stop the function. Control C, enter. So the function is stopped. So to, the, to create a function app, you have to connect to your Azure account. To connect to your Azure account, click Azure, and then click Sign into Azure. It's gonna pop up your browser. Click the account that you're gonna use. So go back to VS Code. Now it's authenticated. To create a new resource, you click plus, choose create function app in Azure, enter global unique name for the new function app. In this case, let's call quick function 4242 and then enter. And then watch in the, oh, pick the, Python version and the region, in my case, Australia East. And then it will pop up the Azure activity log. It will take a few seconds and all the resources will be created in Azure. If you expand the page description here and go to function app, the new function will appear here. At the moment, there are two functions that I already have in my account. Just I'm going to fast forward this in my video so you don't need to wait. Okay, once you see a green tick like that, and then we'll see the quick function 4242 that was created. Now we are ready to deploy it. So let's go to my Azure account first. I'll sign in. And then I go to resource group. I can see that there is a resource group called quick function. And then it automatically created um, a app service plan, a application inside, an Azure storage account, a function app, now workspace for log analytics. So this is part of the package to make sure that the function works. If I go to the function app, so there is no function deployed as of now. Let's deploy our function to this app. Go back to the Visual Studio Code and then clicking on this uh, cloud with a arrow up and then deploy to function app. Pick the function, in my case, quick function 4242. And then, are you sure you want to deploy quick function 4242? This will overwrite any previous deployments and cannot be undone. Click deploy. And then they will pop up here, deploying to quick function 4242. Click output window. And then you can follow the process. It will take a few seconds, probably less than a minute. And it will prompt you when it's ready. So, congratulations, your function is in production. Now, copy this link here, which is the uh, production endpoint of your function. Open um, Postman again, create a new get request, click here, make a request. I have a not successful response. So let's pass a query parameter. Uh, name equals Pedro. Let's put capital and then send. Okay, it's working production. Let's try a post request with a JSON body. So curly brace name. Oops, let's put Lower case, just in case, and then Pedro. Let's send. Voila! Congratulations! 
you just deploy in I don't know how long it takes so far, probably less than 10 minutes. So let's go to the um, my Azure account. Let's refresh this page. And then you can see there is a function here. Click code test. So we know that's working. I'm just going to show you that you can test in the portal. Click test run. You can put a get or post. Let's do a get. No, let's do a post. Because and then you can pass the body. So the body again is name and then my name. And then I run and I get the response. Hello, Pedro. This HP trigger function executed successfully. Close. And before I forget, you don't want it to pay. Uh, it's very cheap, but you don't want it to pay any costs. You just click on the resource group and then click delete this resource group. And then type the name, quick function, 4242, and then delete. All right, it's going to go in a few, probably, minutes or so. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my quick, ex quick explanation on how to set up your environment and deploy test locally and then deploy in production. See how it is easy. So Microsoft make it really easy. So if you like this video, please click the uh, like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can receive notifications for more videos uh, about Azure, about Power BI, about SQL. Thanks for watching.